uh, welcome to the Eighth South South Forum on Sustainability. And uh, well, today uh, we are uh, having the uh, 16th session uh, for the whole forum. We actually started uh, on June the 15th uh, with the um, inaugural lecture by Gustavo. And uh, let me first introduce myself. Uh, my name is Lao Qin Chi. Uh, I'm a coordinator of the program on cultures of sustainability in the Center for uh, Cultural Research and Development in Lingnan University. I'm also one of the founding members of Global University for Sustainability. And uh, the whole the forum is um, uh, co-organized uh, co by Global University and also Lingnan University with uh, uh, co-organizers, including the Earth University. So um, today uh, we are going to um, uh, have this very uh, exciting uh, exchange uh, between the Zapatista delegation. Uh, we are going to talk about the exchange between the Zapatista delegation and the European social movements. Uh, for, the, for our aud uh, audience uh, now listening to us in Ch from China, uh, I think many of you are very familiar with the Zapatistas. So we have this book that was published uh, in 2006. That is the, it is called um, uh, The uh, Masked Knight, uh, the writings of uh, Subcommander Marcos. And actually, uh, Subcommander Marcos also got a copy of this book. And um, so this was, um, so that it was um, being uh, uh, translated and edited by Professor Dai Jinghua and myself. And um, it, it was very well received in China. It was sold out uh, in two weeks. And, um, but then uh, after that, uh, we have actually been uh, writing quite a lot uh, on uh, the Zapatistas in China. China. So, for example, uh, from January to March, I myself wrote four uh, essays, uh, which were published uh, on the journal, uh, which is called uh, The Paper. It is, well, it was it's produ uh, produced by Tencent uh, News. And uh, the readership has been between uh, half a million and uh, 800,000 uh, for, for each of the papers. Uh, but uh, so uh, the, about the Zapatistas, what they are doing now, about their history, about the struggles, and about the current uh, visit to Europe, that has all been reported. And so uh, we are very glad that uh, tonight we are listening from you, and we are hope that the Chinese audience will also learn a lot from you. Mm -hmm. And on Zoom tonight, we also have friends from all over the world, <laughs> from across different regions. And uh, so I would like to first uh, introduce the co-moderator of this evening. And I think uh, he's uh, very familiar to all of you. Uh, but um, well, first, uh, let me introduce uh, Gustavo Esteva. Uh, Gustavo Esteva is an activist and public intellectual and the author of numerous books, such as uh, Hope at the Margins Beyond Human Rights and Development, Escaping Education, Living as Learning Within Grassroots Cultures, Grassroots Postmodernism, Remaking the Soil of Cultures, and The Future of Development, a Radical Manifesto. He has been actively engaged in the fight for reclaiming the commons together with indigenous peoples, peasants, and urban marginalized. He collaborates with the University of uh, the uh, Earth uh, in Oaxaca, which he helped to found in 2001. And uh, before I met um, Gustavo with a Chinese delegation, including Professor Wen Tejun, Dai Jinghua, and Huan Ping, that was in 2002, I already read his book, uh, Postmodern, uh, Grassroots Postmodernism. And, uh, and that was why uh, back in 2002, we were very, very happy to meet Gustavo in person. And the friendship had, start, had started since then. And uh, Gustavo uh, is also very well known in China and because uh, we have translated uh, his works. And uh, for the opening ceremony uh, of the South South Forum on June the 18th, 
the recording of uh, Gustavo for the nine minutes. It was posted with English and Chinese subtitles uh, on the website in on the Global University website uh, in China, and um, and and then and um, we had uh, actually uh, well almost one hundred thousand viewers uh, for that one. And uh, so, uh, well, we so what we have already done is also we have also um, uh, translated and also subtitled uh, Gustavo's uh, inaugural lecture uh, on June the fifteenth, and that was uh, on the question of uh, friendship, hope, and surprise. And I'm sure there will be tens of thousands of people reading. So, without further ado, um, I would like now to um, uh, well, hand over the moderation to Gustavo. So, Gustavo, please. Thanks a lot, King Chi. I am almost overwhelmed with all your uh, welcome and uh, presentation introduction. Um, I hope we will continue nourishing these friendships that started in very good time. Um, let me now start with a few reflections on what we are discussing today. We are in one of the worst moments in human history. We cannot, we must not stand idle by. What can we do? Do we have enough political power to do what is badly needed to stop the current horror? Rarely in human history have the dominant groups reached such extremes of moral degradation and cynicism. One can hardly believe the stand of the racism, sexism, and destructive compulsion of a regime in which the patriarchal condition has been exacerbated. There has never been a human group with a capacity for destruction of its own habitat, similar to that of those who today destroy the entire planet. They are destroying their own living space, which belongs to everyone. Those who did it in the past on a different scale did not know what that they were doing it. Knowing that what they are doing today does not stop those who are destroying the planet at an accelerated rate. The worst is that this exercise of domination is practiced with increasing unlimited violence. The figures attributed to the virus are insignificant in comparison with the deaths that can be reasonably charged to the criminal account of the dominant groups. Apparently, they have all the power. They would be the, the strongest. They would be using their political force to oppress everyone and carry out their destructive deed. In the common perception, no one seems to be able to stop them. The Zapatistas invite us to consider an alternative hypothesis. Those who today we call Zapatistas resorted for many years to everything. They tried economic, social, and political organization. They made multiple social and political calls like that impressive 2000 kilometer march. Nobody listened to them, neither society nor the government. And then they continued to die of hunger and curable diseases as they were clearly the weak ones, they had to resort to violence. Their insurrection, however, soon the, so, the so-called civil society. We finally heard them and we told them that we were supporting their claims, but that we did not want more violence. In a few days, they became the strong. 12 days after the uprising, they used a ceasefire to put their weapons to sleep. Never again they have used them in spite of continual harassment and even armed attacks. 
time and again, they tried to negotiate with the authorities. They were betrayed time and again. Apparently, they were isolated in the land where they were constructing their autonomy, well rooted in their physical and cultural places. Apparently, they were weak again. But as always, looks are deceiving. They were the strong, they are still the strong. Millions around the world continue to listen to them. Their ideas and practices continue to inspire many people who allow themselves to be governed by them. Political power is just that, the capacity to govern ideas and behavior with your own deeds. What the Zapatistas have been doing is basically an original exercise of political power. We see it now when La Montaña, that small ship, crossed the ocean and Tierra Insumisa, as what used to be Europe is now called, warmly opened its arms to them. Hundreds of collectives are now organizing themselves in 30 countries to host them. Unexpected mobilizations take place. The Zapatista passports carried by the travelers clearly state that they do not carry arms, nor will they participate in anything that calls for them. They do not appeal to violence. This is just an expression of the Zapatista's paradoxical style. An army, the Zapatista Army for National Liberation, crossed the ocean with no more weapons than their presence and their word, and beyond any form of nationalism. The liberation they are still looking for is not confined to any nation. In the neoliberal era, the political power of governments their concrete capacity to govern thoughts and behaviors was continuously reduced. In 2020, they provoked a deep and general fear to reverse the process. They achieved unprecedented obedience. Even those who were in rebellion were subjected to, subjected to rules about the virus imposed by the governments with violence, with the police and the army, it is possible to destroy a people, but not to govern it. Something similar happens with fear. You can provoke paralysis, anxiety, fear, even obedience, but you can't govern people's ideas and practices, as we have been seeing all around the world in the last year. Even these extreme resources, moreover, is being exhausted. The structures no longer know what to do to maintain some semblance of government. Down below, meanwhile, people's capacities to govern themselves are growing every day. Often for the strict reasons of survival, people reinvent themselves and change their ways of thinking and doing. They join with others who are also practicing autonomy and little by little they began to weep the rebellion. These are the conditions in which the Zapatista tour was organized. 27 years ago, they awakened us. All anti-systemic movement and acknowledge that the Zapatista uprising was a wake up signal before the liberal nightmare. Today, the initiative represents something else equally important. We are all awakening, and many of us have been thinking that the time to weave all the discontents have come, not to create a gigantic massive mobilization, not in the tradition of centralized organizations, not in the 20th century style. Just to listen, to listen to each other and learn, to embrace the other, to be inspired by the other, to celebrate all the time, all the others 
that are in a rebellion mood. That is what we are learning today from the Zapatistas. For many of us, this is as important as the uprising in 1994. Let's explore what this means today for all of us. This is our panel. Let me introduce now our speakers today. Alejandra Jimenez is a woman, a mother, feminist, and activist in the grassroots and indigenous socio-environmental movements. She is a member of the National Indigenous Congress. She is woven with different defending and protection networks of nature, Mother Earth, and life, such as Corazon, the Regional Coordination of Solidarity Action, the Mexican Alliance Against Fracking, the Gender, Territory, and Extractivist Group, the Glasgow Agreement, Global Tapestry of Alternatives, and others. She currently collaborates with the Earth University in Oaxaca. Elena Fusar Poli is an Italian activist from Milan, where she has been taking part for 16 years in Cantiere, Neutral Air Space, an organization engaged in social, student, decolonial, and feminist movements. Cantieri declares to be inspired by the Zapatista principles and particularly by construction of autonomy and alternatives. Since 2016, she participates in Non Una Di Meno network against any form of gender violence. She is also a social anthropology PhD student and currently she's spending some months in Mexico doing fieldwork research on communitarian strategies that are facing the pandemic. And finally, we have Ashish Kotari, is a founder member of Indian environmental group Kalpa Bridge. He has co-authored or co-edited over 30 books and helps coordinate the Vikal Sangam and ra radical ecological democracy processes and its co-editor and the global tapestry of alternatives. He's also co-editor of Alternative Futures and Pluriverse, a post-development dictionary. We have been friends for a long, long time now, as is decades long. It's very, very old time. You were very, very young when we started our friendship. Um, now we will start, we will begin um, with Elena. Perhaps you can now participate, Elena, starting with your first intervention. First of all, I wish to thank you for the invitation and for organizing this important occasion to exchange experience and reflection and to share what the Zapatista tour uh, means in all the different territories in which we live. The Zapatista tour is uh, definitely an incredible opportunity to build bridges among our several world perspectives, cosmovision, and more generally, uh, our different ideas of promoting uh, alternative from below. Let me introduce briefly myself. My name is Elena Fusarpoli, and I am an Italian activist, in particular involved in Cantiere and Mutual Aid Space. Uh, it's a social movement which tries to build another world, another possible world, and another possible way of life in the heart of the Italian financial capital. Il Cantiere was born in 2001 from the experience of the alter globalist movement that uh, at that time made the few big age tremble when they summed together in their palaces to decide the future of 8 billion of people. Many years have passed now, but the 1% is still putting profit before life. But we also are still there, of course. Uh, as the Zapatista says, our struggle is for life. First of all, I believe that retaking and reappropriating the holistic and revolutionary power of this so simple word, life, is the deepest, in, in, uh, in its deepest sense, charged with dignity and awareness 
probably represent the first vertigo that the Zapatista tour has produced in the European movement, in our minds and in our hearts. Of course, it's not only about human life, but the life which spread from the network among her bodies and territories. Since 2001, Cantiere and Mutual Aid Space have promoted and have been involved in many struggles, for example, for an alternative quality education, for housing and city rights, for a transfeminist and the colonial city against any form of racism, sexism, fascism, xenophobia. Um, uh, we have been promoted solidarity and mutual aid against the neoliberalism, individualism that want us to, to be alone and overall desperate. Particularly during the pandemic, we have organized some projects for collecting and distributing organic food to people, to poor people, basically. But the important is that we collaborate and support small farmer against the large scale distribution that we know how can make people, animal, and all the herd sick and exploited. We have tried not to leave anyone alone, but it's undeniable that in one of the most affected areas on the planet, of course, together with China, isolation is leaving deep hearts that now need to be healed. We can only feel warm joy and energy by reading the Zapatista declaration, which stand that the mountain came to literally thank the other for their existence, to be grateful for the teaching that this rebellion and his resistance have given them, to deliver the promised flower, to embrace the other and whisper in his hair that she is not alone, to whisper that it is worth resisting, struggling, feeling pain for those who are no longer there. It is worth feeling anger because the criminal still unpunished. It is worth dreaming, not a perfect, but a better world, a world without fear. Always powerful, <laughs> the Zapatista's words. I remember that when the, new, the news of the Zapatista tour, arrived in Europe and the voice began to run, to run between one organi organization to another. We thought that we could really see the light at the end of the tunnel, that we had to prepare ourselves to welcome the delegation, of course, but overall for ourselves. The pandemic has strongly highlighted social inequalities and spread the awareness that we cannot delegate our lives. Because if we don't organize to take care of ourselves, no one will. If we don't organize to guarantee the possibility of healing, of eating, of living, of learning, no one will. However, we realize that this challenge is really difficult. And it's really difficult, particularly because all of us were born and raised in the coordinates of the same cosmovision in which neoliberalism is rooted. So we need a little bit, an extra imagination. This is the Zapatista tour for us. We are reading the Zapatista tour also as an invitation. Let's break the colonial might that solidarity is only one way, obviously, from the first to the third world. Because what we need is mutual aid and mutual support between the world from below. We are an organization, yeah, Gustav told this, uh, that define itself as Zapatista inspired because over the years, many of us have been lucky enough to visit the caracols in Chiapas and have brought back 
the strength of the assemblies, of the common work, of the celebration that unites the community. From the Zapatistas, we have learned to the importance of thinking globally, but acting locally with roots firmly planted in the territory and our branches stretched toward the world. We have learned to feel similar because different. We have learned there is not only one word, but there are many. We have embraced the principle, never stopping walking by asking. And above all, the importance to build autonomy here and now. In the obviously differences of places, of context, of languages and practices, we try to bring the Zapatista principle into our daily action. The Zapatista tour is a new and extraordinary opportunity to do it. It seems that the arrival of the delegation in Italy is scheduled for mid July, but as the comrades of Austria say, they arrive when they arrive. The Zapatista have already started to sow. Thanks a lot, Elena. It was a very good introduction of the presence of the meaning of the presence of uh, the Zapatistas in Europe. This is a very good way to start our exploration. Perhaps now Elena can take the floor. You are uh, silenced. You need to open your mic. And Gustavo talked about uh, the great atrocities, the numerous uh, crises that are evident with the COVID pandemic and in this context of uh, fear and uh, hegemony, the, uh, the challenge for life has become a, a possibility to develop new narratives, to develop uh, pluri universes and uh, multiple and numerous worlds that we can build and that we are in fact building. And as uh, Gustavo said, I am part of the National Indigenous Congress, and I've been uh, working with them, uh, with Indigenous people since over 20 years. And there's no doubt for me, and I will talk a little bit about my experience as a, a Mexican woman who, uh, without a doubt, is meant the Zapatista struggle, a, a possibility of uh, giving a new meaning to our lives. And the Mo Zapatista movement uh, for a lot of us was certainly uh, an, uh, allowed us to uh, imagine another world as a original peoples. And this allowed us also to uh, dream the Zapatista dream and see in these dynamics uh, to see uh, digni in a dignified way the indigenous peoples. And this has allowed me to approach uh, many uh, indigenous peoples in different states of uh, uh, Mexico, from Potosi and Veracruz and others, and, and, and to uh, be with them and struggle with them. And this can mean something very small, but our struggles are this in this way, they are small struggles. And this way, we can uh, translate the enormity of life and the eruption, the emergence of uh, this Zapatista movement uh, opened these new avenues of possibilities to see life uh, with dignity uh, with, uh, for those of us who have been marginalized and resisted for 500 years. And it was like 500 years after the beginning of these imposed colonialism and these exaggerated extractivism today, the mountain has crossed the ocean and that be today in uh, what uh, is Europe and, uh, and to name its uh, diversities and its, its original peoples that have been exploited and silenced and now that are being homogenized through terror and fear. There's no doubt today that the Zapatistas and those of us who are part of the CNI, we are happy for the arrival of the Zapatistas in Europe, but also for the possibility of meeting brothers and sisters that are resisting, 
whose uh, struggles are silenced and this possibility of uh, uh, building a common work uh, for a new new world and this uh, makes us proud but we also know that we have our pains and it's important that these pains be expressed and heard and it's necessary that we say that this big project which is the patriarchal hegemonic heterosexual capitalism has been imposed in our territories and they want to uh, take our territories but also our cultures and our way of life through multiple extractivist projects in mining that they have been practicing for over 500 years since the beginning of the, the colony and that they continue practicing but now in a more sophisticated way, way with the science and technology and extracting huge uh, amounts of uh, quantities of uh, minerals that uh, are higher that they are doubling the amount of uh, 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 minerals that they have extracted during the entire colonial pre period in the last 10 years and this is only an example we have other there are other extractivist projects such as deforestation the extraction of uh, uh, petroleum and gas hydroelectric projects and other uh, mega development projects that uh, in the real estate infrastructures for the transportation of uh, materials and uh, products uh, highways uh, and uh, pipelines and you've heard about uh, our indigenous peoples have uh, refused these projects they have because they go against our life because they destroy our ways of life and i'm referring in particular to the maya train and the inter-ocean uh, transportation project which uh, would promote the tourism but what they are seeking is to extract our wealth and, uh, and exploit us and uh, destroy life and these uh, in these projects the indigenous people who live in these territories we want the life life to continue despite these uh, project projects of a uh, big capital and we say no and we don't want these projects and we wonder who is benefiting from these projects in addition these projects that we know that they are uh, typical extractivist projects uh, we are also uh, attacked by other forms of capitalism with a uh, green capitalism and its major energy projects with uh, uh, solar uh, farms and uh, wind windmill farms and and, and and we have learned from our, our ancestors to respect these territories and this, these go against this respect of authority we uh, work with the corn and so we have another way of uh, being related between uh, human beings but also between all living beings and what the Zapatistas have uh, recovered is the experience of uh, the in Zapatista peoples and the, the many other uh, peoples that are part of uh, the National Indigenous Congress. And it's a, 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 a relation of respect of uh, Mother Nature, and which is essential for us as uh, uh, Indigenous people, but beyond that also. And with the pandemic, this uh, relationship is uh, interdependent and is essential for our survival. But despite all this, as in 500 years, the last 500 years, everything is uh, threatened and it's necessary be before this threat to develop the resistance together. So at the beginning of the year, when the EZLN uh, made the declaration for life and for uh, the people throughout the world, uh, uh, supported this declaration and we called on a uh, meeting with each other uh, in our differences but also in our pains that make us equal and also in our joy and our hope for life 
with the hope to and maintaining the joy with the, this meeting between each other and to see each other and and with our pains we could uh, face this reality which is hegem hegemonic through uh, control and fear and has said uh, elena the crisis is not only a climate crisis and not only a health uh, uh, it's also a crisis of the imaginary of the hope and the the Zapatista of it with the diversity of their ways of speaking of naming things of presenting themselves and of dreaming the world and inviting us to dream the world does invite us to build different narratives and to admire this uh, world with the uh, eyes of wonder and what at the beginning uh, of the year we considered so difficult the uh, Zapatista ca comrades they were able to in the small boat cross the ocean and make all this a reality and this encourages us and fills us with joy not just with words uh, that are poetic but also with images that are very poetic they make references to uh, these images the uh, Zapatista men and women the French Zapatista that are inviting us to to diversity so this is a great feast not just for the indigenous peoples it's a feast for the entire world and these are the presence of the Zapatismo and so there's no doubt that uh, as original peoples we are very proud of being part of this experience uh, even if it's uh, in from our geography what is being built right now is history we are disputing the history the original peoples we are disputing the history and now we will do this through our diversity our multiple languages uh, ways multiple ways of uh, being related to life with other human beings with the cosmos and all the beings uh, underground and our ancestors and this is what we want to share and we know that on the other side of the ocean we will meet many stories that will develop our brotherhood will make us feel solidary and will uh, help us uh, fight against the uh, stories of terror and control that are being imposed upon us so it's a great pleasure for me to be able to share this with you uh, from the other side of the world and to be able to share it with all the sisters and brothers in China who we know are resisting and that in this moment uh, they are in the heart of what we call the capitalism uh, that is destructive. We know that there are uh, indigenous peoples in China that are resisting with dignity that are uh, taking the example of the Zapatistas. And we thank you so much, and Li Kin Chi, who is a great promoter of uh, the Zapatista path, because as I did, uh, I was uh, allowed to see hope that you will do it also with all your friends in China who are listening to us, who at the present time maybe will see us uh, later and this will be uh, this uh, path of, in life will allow us to recognize each other as in our and our dignity the different uh, peoples of china who have been submitted and who have struggled for their identity who have struggled to be part of this uh, network of life it's for life that we are in this struggle Thank you, Gustavo. Uh, that, back to yes. you. It was uh, really a very good uh, introduction, a very good way to describe how we are experiencing the Zapatista tour here in Mexico, particularly by the originary people. Thank you again, Alejandra. A very good des description. Now, Elena, I would like to explore with you something that uh, you already mentioned, that you um, uh, quoted Com Commandante Ana Maria when in 1996, in the Intercontinental Encounter, 
she said a sentence that impressed all of us, but perhaps we could not understand it on time when she said, we are equals because we are different. Perhaps this is the time to name the difference that make us similar. Perhaps you can say something, talk a little about the new name of Europe. Uh, Shamil comes please up. Elena, please. 500 years ago, from Europe to Latin America, ships traveled the route to invade. Today, uh, they do their way back to share. The very act of renaming Europe is more than a simple baptism. Naming is not a mere catalog act, but is the affirmation of the subjectivity who names. America is an entire continent that bears the name of uh, an European colonial explorer. Mexico is a social construction born with the colonial system that make invis invisible a pluriverse of cosmologies and communities. These differences are exactly the kind of differences that are instead recognized as others because equal, others and equal, by the Zapatistas who claim the possibility of naming Europe Tierra Insubmissa, indomitable land. The, the act of, of naming could rise from a negation or from recognition. The fourth one involves the total absence of any kind of relationship, and it provides the basis of colonial regime, as we learn among the others from Franz Fanon or Enric Dussel. But the second one, the second possibility, is by contrast the, the possibility space where relationship could grow. We, European from below, are grateful to be recognized and welcome the, to have the occasion to meet Zapatistas face to face, because face to face is the precise dimension which also friendship, brotherhood and sisterhood could grow, could spread. When the, the president of Mexico raised his voice asking Spain to apologize for the conquest, the Zapatistas asked which Spain he was addressing. Certainly not the one who renamed all the metro stop in Madrid, delating the name of the colonizer and replacing them with the Zapatista slogan. Recognizing that there is a Europe from below with a brown heart with the Corazon Moreno is a call that received an enormous echo. Over 5,000 organizations signed the Declaration for Life. The Zapatistas will meet Europe from below, which is a melting pot Europe that nullify any anachronistic dream of a region and a society based on the purity of race, of identity. The Zapatistas will discover also that in Europe, there are not only brown hearts, but an entire hybrid and pluridiverse continent. We, we could waste our uh, analyzing the difference uh, uh, and similarity um, on, of the onset of melting pot in Europe and in Latin America, but now we, we are not interested in it. And what really matters to us um, is that the tour, the Zapatista tour, could be a mutual strength opportunity between those who suffer the denial of a passport, for example, or more generally a piece of paper because they are different, different from the uh, hegemonic ideas of identity in each state. The states deny the existence of not white people, except in terms of workforce exploited. But we know, we can see it more, 
really, really clearly that a lot of people are raising their hands worldwide to be able to breathe. I wanna only add a little bit and a little thing. The tour is also a possibility to underline the unspoken barbarities of internal colonialism. And it's really clear reading the text written, for example, by the organization of Southern Italy, that is the territory that historically has been exploited, homologated, dominated by the political and economical powers of the Northern areas. It's really clear also reading the text written by the original peoples marginalized by nation sta national states, such as the Sami people, which live among Norway, Sweden, and Finland. So we, we think in, in all the Europe, we think that these tours is a call to the colonized, to the colonize our state, our idea of Europe and also our struggle. Muchas gracias. Thanks a lot, Elena. It is uh, one very important point in discussing the Zapatista tour, how uh, we don't see usually uh, this area of Europe, the Europe from below, the Europe that is resisting. And this is a very important point because one of the basic elements is that we are talking about decolonization, not only of the colonized, but also of the colonizers. And this is a very important contribution of the Zapatistas to discuss what is decolonization in Europe? What's the meaning of decolonization? And how we can uh, listen to the other, acknowledge the otherness of the other, but also celebrate this kind of otherness. Uh, perhaps, Alejandra, you can elaborate a little on the question of uh, Dr. Robles that is in the chat. That is, uh, he's asking how we can connect the struggles of the people in Europe, of the people in the North, with the struggles of the people in the South, the so-called Global South how our struggles are connected, how the Zapatistas are connecting them, how this is a fantastic opportunity to connect with each other, to connect our different struggles, to put in a relation, in the direct relations, that those that are in re rebellion, in open rebellion against this destructive dominant system. Alejandra, por favor. Yes, I believe that today, as we are talking about we can uh, build these actions that you are mentioning uh, and asking about in the chat. They are thought in a certain way to uh, erode the capitalist system. And with the, there are a few uh, examples that can be presented that we have seen over the last few years, the, such as uh, citizens uh, exercises uh, who uh, block uh, tr multinationals, but not just these types of actions. We have seen also in international forums in which their uh, peoples demonstrate the youth also and there is a, a confluence of struggles because uh, we bring together our different pains and the system that is attacking us and has the Zapatistas say, the, uh, our analysis we share it with you. And this brings us to uh, identify this, a common enemy, which is capitalism. If we can uh, uh, federate the struggles of the South and the North, we, we, we have to uh, recognize the privileges and this is something that Elena mentioned uh, when we do this exercise of decolonization of de decolonizing ourselves and eliminating the internal colonialism that we have involves recognizing privileges 
and recognizing that the indigenous territories have been exploited and have been robbed. We have, uh, they have stolen our uh, territories. They haven't allowed us to continue our lives in this. And others have benefited from this. And we have to, rec by recognizing this, we can become uh, brothers, federate ourselves and in this way uh, uh, fight against the excesses of uh, capitalism. Even those who have uh, benefited partially suffer from capitalism. And in some parts of the world, the youth have uh, put front and center when they talked about uh, climate justice, they refer to these uh, struggles, as the Zapatistas say, that uh, have an impact on all of us. At the present time, everybody is affected, even the uh, peoples that are the farthest in the remotest uh, areas of the world who, and who have uh, uh, struggled to be uh, disconnected from the global world. And so we have to uh, develop uh, ties and go beyond the rational logic and, and, and understand each other with the language of the heart and of uh, feelings, and this way we can develop a solidarity uh, between all of us who suffer uh, these uh, things, these pains uh, throughout the world. And I think that the North-South solidarity is, is indispensable, not just so that we, the indigenous people, can continue to exist, but also so that the very humanity can continue to exist on the planet if we don't have these north-south uh, links, we uh, the humanity will be at stake and even uh, life itself will be threatened. And so, uh, according to my experience, for example, in the fight against uh, oil projects, uh, we see more and more the need to act uh, locally against the uh, large uh, private uh, oil companies who don't recognize that we are in a climate crisis. And these actions are developed between the North and the South. In, there's no doubt that in the North, we will meet uh, the corporations that we are fighting against. But in the South, we will see the installations, the uh, oil fields where they are extracting the resources. And I think this is an exercise that uh, has been, was done with the people, our comrades in Morelos state in Mexico, in which uh, they were uh, being, uh, where water has been uh, uh, grabbed by uh, large multinationals. And also the comrades in Italy uh, 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 supported this struggle by taking over installations of the uh, transnational. And so this, uh, means that we have to think globally and act locally. The, the enemy is the same, and we have to act in our territories, our local territories. And, and small actions uh, allow us to, to uh, coordinate our actions between different areas uh, through uh, friendship and solidarity. Who, with people who have uh, situations that are can be somewhat different. And this is what the Zapatistas are proposing, that we, we work together in this way. Um, I think that this uh, Alejandra raised a very important uh, a struggle against capitalism, not uh, just a struggle uh, that address the corporations and try to resist the operation of the corporations. It is not a struggle in Wall Street. It is the struggle in our own place, at the grassroots. This is what we are really struggling and dismantling capitalism, dismantling the dominant regime in our concrete struggle in every place. And this is the importance of connecting these different struggles in different parts of the world. This is the importance of the Zapatista tour. We are getting information, very impressive information of all the different mobilizations in Europe, of this Europe from below, of very different groups. As Selena mentioned, a lot of groups, thousands of groups 
uh, have been woven to host the Zapatistas and to listen to them and to listen to each other. And we are getting very important information, very meaningful information about these movements and even about the new slogans produced in Europe because of the Zapatista uh, arrival. Perhaps, Selena, you can tell us a little about what is the meaning today of Europa Desperta? What is the meaning of these representations of the people in Europe, the Europe from below, with the Zapatista tour? Yes, we, I think that for the European movement, the more generally, no, the, the Zapatista caravan is a breath of fresh air, especially after the pandemic, but in general, in general, the coronavirus has reactivated as never, as never before the borders of national states internal of the fortress Europe. And this virus shows the fragility of the Europe from above from Europe as legal construct, construction, behind any ambition of the racist and nationalist parties that uh, are fortifying themselves in several countries. The tour not only will cross, cross all the border, but it invites us to resume and strengthen it, the contact among us to receive it. This is true at European level, but also in every single territory. Desperta, no? Europa despierta, rise up, is the invitation of the mountain that docks at the port of Vigo in Galicia. And I think that rise up is the first success in thousands of corners of Europe after a virus and after that bad governance closed millions of people at home for more than a year, affecting also the movement, the possibility of mobilizing, of criticize. Were we already uh, awake? Were we well already awake? We are now really, really excited. As the Greek Zapatista assembly suggests, the multitude of meetings, debates, action that are uniting territories, countries, and also continents, even before the arrival of the delegation, is the first result of an invitation to brotherhood and sisterhood. We face a common enemy, a many headed Hydra that displaces production, value extraction, and exploitation across the globe. If we know each other, if we know the dangers that materialize in front of each of us, if we have the brotherhood to be able to weave together, then we can deconstruct one by one all the nodes of the production, the production and reproduction chain of the neoliberalist system. The sixth declaration of Selva La Candona taught us think globally and act locally. No? A good example is the one who Alexandra mentioned. No? We, in Milan, we carried out an action against the multinational, the transnational Danone in solidarity with the blockade of the same company by the communities of Cholula in the Mexican state of Puebla because of the privatization and lack, lack of water in this area. But it's only one example, no? Um, I remember the multitude of action all around Europe uh, after the terrible, terrible episode of Ayotzinapa. These are examples that we call indefinitely multiplied if we sum, if we sum together. Concretely speaking, the organizational assemblies for uh, the arrival 
of the caravana are multiplying at local, regional, national, and when needed, also international levels. In some countries, Escuelitas Zapatistas, Zapatista schools are work in progress. In my opinion, the interesting question are, will we be able to keep these bonds alive also after the tour? Will we be able to, to change, to decolonize, firstly, ourselves, our struggles, our movements? Will we be able to keep on working by asking? A very interesting um, uh, sharing of what the, of the meaning of uh, desperta. What is the meaning of uh, awakening? Awakening with the Zapatista uh, tour. Uh, 